Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today we're gonna make a little experiment. We didn't do an experiment in a long time. It was due. So we're gonna play around with wick watering. Now this is a technique widely used with African violets. Many growers prefer it. I never used it myself, but I knew about it and I just thought, why don't I try this with orchids? So basically what it implies is that a wick is placed inside the pot and goes out into a pool of water. Thus it wicks water and maintains the medium wet. It works very well with soil because soil is very water absorbent, does not work with anything else other than absorbent medias. However, I am lucky, I'm using ceramics, which is very absorbent. So you know how there are those orchids who really like to stay moist and you know how sometimes you don't have time and sometimes things happen and your orchid is not doing well? Yeah, today we're gonna repot the Perminia santina. She's not doing all that well for me and I really don't think addition of Aleka was pretty fortunate in my case. So. We're gonna unpot it, try to set up a little pool of water or a little reservoir, try to use a wick and see if this method works with orchids. See if the medium can stay moist all the time as long as there is water in the reservoir and maintain this orchid hydrated. Now before you jump to conclusions and you say, well orchids don't need to be wet all the time. Well rules kind of change when you're using something else rather than bark or even sphagnum moss. I'm using ceramics, which is a clay medium. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, you can check this info card right here or the description below. I have a presentation on ceramics, like an inorganic medium in general. It has some benefits, has some certain properties. Also, I'm using a clay pot, very ventilated. So overall, even if I'm gonna keep my pot very moist, it will still be very ventilated. The pot being clay, it will still emanate that humidity. It's pretty much different than your conventional orchid growing setup. So that's why I believe the water wicking technique might actually work for those orchids who really like to stay moist and go all crazy when you let them dry for too long like I have on this Permenia. Mm. Alrighty, but let's get to it. So first of all, I want to unpot my orchid. This will be a good moment to see how the roots are doing in the ceramics. Well, yeah, they're growing. They're not doing all that great though. Because as I was saying, the ceramics is kind of dry. I'm having issues keeping up with watering for this orchid. So hopefully you can see the roots do have growing tips, but they're struggling. So I think this orchid would prefer to stay much more moist. Alrighty, so with that in mind, let's prepare our reservoir. Okay, I'm actually gonna reuse this pot and I'm gonna create my reservoir. I chose this plastic container that has a lid because the lid will serve as a support for the pot. I don't want the pot to stay in water, I only want the wick, so everything should be raised on top of the water. And of course there are many different ways to do this, but since I have a lid, I'm just gonna make a hole in the lid and see if I can support the pot on top of it. So what I will do is try to center the pot on the lid and then trace a mark around it. It doesn't need to be very round, very straight, because the pot will actually be a little bit inside. You just have to have an idea of the size. Well, that's about enough. And then I'm gonna try to poke this out. I'll first use a knife, because I don't see how a scissors can get in here, but eventually I'll use a scissors. And I need to be very careful with this, so I'll shut down the camera, I'll come back when I'm done. And I'm done. So what happened was I poked the initial hole with a knife and then I just cut with a pruner because this is a very tough plastic. So I cut around it and then I needed to enlarge it a bit just so this pot goes in a little bit. But as you can see, really not all the way down. It just needs to keep, keep it stable. It's somewhat stable. It will do. Now the next thing is to find a wick and I'm actually gonna use synthic but you can definitely use other types of textiles that are wicking. Mind you, you will need to go for a synthetic thread because it will decompose otherwise in the water. So if you don't have synthic, that's perfectly fine. I'll share with you a link down below with a video with a African violet grower that uses this technique and you can see what type of thread they use. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to feed this thread through the drainage hole, it's a bit big, but we're gonna cut it, like so, and try to maintain the wick inside the pot. Now I will be using the same medium, so I'm just gonna try 
to not go for the Lekka pebbles all that much, simply because they're just not wicking and water retentive. But a few of them will not matter. And here we are almost at the top. As you can see, I kept my wick towards the surface. Now it's time to try to pot this orchid. I really will not remove the medium on the roots because it's inorganic, it does not decompose. So I'm just gonna leave the wick somewhere here. Then I'm gonna fill it with ceramics. This is brand new ceramics because it's really hard to get the Lekka beads out right at this time. So I'm just gonna fill everything. Okay, this looks good. I'm gonna trim this scenting a little bit because it's a bit long. So what I'm gonna do is give it a good water right now because this ceramics is pretty dry and I'll come back when I'm done. Okay, next thing is to fill this reservoir with some water. I'm using osmosis water. That's about enough. And then just place the orchid inside. The wick goes into the reservoir, placing the orchid inside. But as you can see, the pot is not touching the water. It's only the wick. So the idea of this is to have constant moisture inside the pot through the wick. That's why I was telling you that you need an absorbent material. So it continuously drags water from the reservoir onto the top. In this way, we won't have a pool of water at the bottom here, so if the roots go down, it should be pretty okay. We have the wick inside the pot on a vertical, so theoretically, everything should benefit from that moisture that the wick draws from the reservoir. Because we have a ceramic pot, it will continuously be moist and evaporate water and keep it a little bit cool as well due to evaporative cooling. And pretty much what I hope is that this medium stays moist as long as there is water in the reservoir. And as you can see, there is quite a bit of water. So theoretically, this orchid should be moist for weeks. I don't know, we shall see what's gonna happen. However, this is one of those orchids which really does prefer to stay moist. It doesn't need to dry out, it really actually hates drying out. This is why I'm trying it out with this particular orchid. Now, of course, it doesn't look appealing, or at least to me, it really doesn't look appealing. However, this is just an experiment. I want to see what happens, and if it turns out that it works well and it's beneficial for my orchid, then maybe we're gonna devise something prettier. Now, keep in mind, this is just an experiment. I do encourage you to try it if you're interested and you like to experiment. However, a few pointers. If you try to do this with bark, it will not work because bark is not absorbent. If you try to do it with sphagnum moss, it will work. However, moss tends to degrade pretty fast. Also, you need to be careful how much you compact the moss because it can get really compacted and suffocate the roots. If you want to know more about sphagnum moss and how to use it, check the info card or the description below. I have a pretty long discussion on it. But it can work with sphagnum moss because it is absorbent. You just need to make sure that the pot has ventilation. Also, you can use a plastic pot, obviously, but I would encourage you to use extra ventilation holes. Keep in mind, this will be moist all the time and you do need aeration as well. Orchids that do like to stay moist like to have ventilation as well, so you need to find the proper balance. Too much moisture, even with them, can be detrimental. Too much air, again, can be detrimental. But pretty much with my setup, the clay pot, clay medium, which does not decompose, as you can see, it's still chunky, so it's still airy even though it's gonna be moist all the time I think it might work it has some great chances but we shall see in the future I think this will be a great idea for people who either go on vacation a lot but they do still want to have some orchids or people who simply do not have time to water or you have a super dry environment but you still want to grow some orchids in that environment clay will be beneficial I presume that if you have a dry environment, it might be warm as well, so the clay will stay cool and also provide humidity around the plant. It's gonna work on many, many levels, at least theoretically. But I'll keep you guys up to date with this experiment. Let me know down below what you guys think. If you're interested in this type of setup with African violets, it can really be done. People are already using it with soil, not ceramics or bark mixtures. But you can check the link below that I share with you so you can learn more, try to experiment as well. I hope you're gonna have fun and I hope you enjoyed this video. Alrighty guys, thank you for watching. I will keep you up to date and I will post links with updates as we go along. I'm really curious to see how long it stays moist. So if you've enjoyed this video, give it a rating, whether it's a like or a dislike, share it with your friends if you think it's helpful. That really helps my channel and always feel free to leave me comments down below. I read them and respond to as many as I can every day. 
Also, feel free to send me a letter anytime at the address you see on the screen or in the description below. Choose an option on the screen if you like to be directed to orchinature.com or watch another orchid video from me. Thank you for watching, I'll see you all next time. Bye!